YouTube. So uh, I've got a leaking wheel, wheel cylinder on the back. So, you know, when you replace one, you got to replace both of them. Don't replace just one because then you'll have to come back and do the other one later because it's bound to fail soon. So um, we're going to show you how to do that. It's on a uh, 2015 Chevrolet Spark, uh, not the EV. 1.2 liters of fury. Um, anyway, so uh, first step, get the wheel off, and then uh, we'll go from there. So uh, again, we're just gonna be doing this with like basic hand tools. The only cool tool I have is this electric impact, and uh, I just use that for the lug nuts. But anyway, uh, let's dig into it and see how it goes. All right. That was simple enough. Um, next thing we got to do, there's a screw in this drum right here. I'll bring you in and show you, but I've got a uh, special way of doing it. Usually they are just too tight to do with, usually they're just too tight to do with your hands. This one is already loose, but the way you do it, take a pair of vice grips here. I'll put them around in my trusty screwdriver, one that fits well. Don't get one that's too small, you're gonna strip it, right? And I have to put these around. Doesn't have to be super tight. But take it. Take my hammer. I'll put it in the screw, give it a little bit of pressure, and then I smack the screw as I'm turning it. And that usually breaks it free. Because I don't have a uh, an impact screwdriver, but once that's done, just pull that screw out of there. All right, like I said, here's that screw right here. And you use the vice grips and the hammer, to get it out of there. Keep it with your lug nuts so it doesn't get lost. And then uh, you have to have the e-brake off. My e-brake's on right now, so. <laughs> All right, make sure your vehicle's chalked. Like uh, you got a piece of wood or something in front of the front tires before you jack it up. Too many people I know have lifted up the vehicle and it falls right off the jacks because, well, they were on a hill. So um, anyway, I've got that out. E-brakes off, ta-da, slides right off. And you see all this brake dust in here. That's good. It means our brakes are working. So these are old, crusty but that's the piece we want to take off today so i'm going to place my brake drum off to the side we'll have to clean that later um now mine on this spark there's one bolt on the back side i'll show you that but there is a uh, brake line that you have to undo also before you take that bolt out because it's very difficult to get that brake line out when the uh the wheel cylinder is allowed to rotate. So we want to keep that solid. So I'll show you that in a second. All right, so that bolt that I'm talking about is right there, that one. And this is the brake line that we have to get off. Now it's gonna leak brake fluid. I don't care that I leak brake fluid on my driveway. A lot of people do. I don't, it's not a big deal to me. I'll just clean it up later or let the rain take care of it. But Anyway, let's uh, get that brake line loose and uh, we'll go from there. All right, I always find it good to hit it with some PB blaster, some penetrating oil, something like that. And then you're gonna wanna go get yourself a line wrench. These are so crucial to doing these because um, with just a regular open end wrench, you're not gonna be able to get in there. It's gonna strip it. You're gonna have a heck of a time and then you're only gonna be able to use vice grips to get it off. So go get yourself a line wrench. Mine happens to be 10 millimeter. Again, this allows it to slip over the line and then it allows it to actually grab on to that wheel cylinder or to the brake line. And it gives it enough bite so that it can bring it off. So mine's not gonna go that way. So I'm gonna try and get it on this side. There we go. And then lefty loosey. Righty tidy, obviously. 
there we go that's why this line wrench is so important because i have to give it so much force to get it on there to get this off now once you've got it loose you can use a regular wrench to get it off of there so i'm gonna get that off and then i'll see you guys in a second all right so once you've got this piece loose slide it out of the way and then you can pull the line out of the actual thing out of the actual wheel cylinder now before it leaks too much you want to grab your 10 millimeter you want to come in here and you want to get where is that bolt this bolt out so come in here with your 10 mil where's that bolt oh it is on that side okay i'm gonna have to move the camera so uh, we've got the old one out you can see how old and crusty it is take the new one and it literally goes back in the exact same way make sure that they match before you go and stick it in and obviously this one's pushed out so what i want to do is i want to push these cylinders in on the ends so that they're in as far as they can go so there's no room for any fluid or anything like that and then you want to take out this little thing because if you don't you're going to be upset about it later come in here and you pop this in just like so make sure that it lines up with your brakes and then Take the nut or the bolt that you took out, find that hole, and put it back in exactly the way that it came out. Pop that in there. And then I want to get this brake line connected as quickly as possible. I'm going to take this brake line, push it down into the line, and then I'm going to start this by hand. Do not start it with a wrench. You will strip it, and you will be so upset because you'll have to replace the whole line or get a, or get a, um, a brake line flare tool, and you'll have to build... or you'll have to fix this brake line. It's not fun. I'm having a hard time getting it started. Okay. Nope, it's still not starting. Loads of fun starting these. I'll get back with you. All right, got it back in. That was very difficult. Um, my line was not lined up. Um, you have to have it lined up perfectly so that that bolt piece will slide over the line and into the hole and meet up with the threads. But got it in. You can see I spilled a bunch of brake fluid down here. That's all brake fluid. It's fine. It'll be okay. Um, but got it in. Brake pads actually look really good. They're not super worn. So we're not going to worry about changing those. And um, yeah, uh, next thing to do is to bleed the brakes. So I actually skipped a step. Um, first thing we're going to do is rebuild the brakes according to... Uh, Buddy at Vice Grip Garage, and you know, to rebuild them, you just, you know, I'll just, just replace that spring, just replace that spring, the tensioner, oh look, just replace the hub, man, those pads too, man, got some new pads in there,
nice and clean. Also, I'm gonna have to uh, recondition this rotor, which means, you know, One thing you do not want to do is after you spray all of this down is taking your greasy brake fluid filled hands and touching the inside of this of this uh drum all right this thing you do not want it to have your oily greasy hands all over it after you've already sprayed everything down so once you have it all you know rebuilt get rid of any excess fluid i guess Line up your hole that your screw was in with the hole on the hub. Pop your brakes back on. And if you're worried about the adjustment, what you want is you want it to spin. You want it to be able to hear it dragging. You don't want to be able to spin it and have it spin forever, but you don't want it to be so tight that you can't spin it. So. And to change that, you'll just go in and you would take your screwdriver and push up on that right there. And that would fix that problem if it was too tight or too loose. So, like I said, line up your hole, pop it on, take your screw, put your screw in. Now, I'm going to let you in on a little secret. The screw's not even necessary. I just put it in there because I had it. But I do not torque it down because I don't like fighting with it later. So, once you do that, all that's left to do is bleed the brakes. I'm going to do that with the tire off and uh, should be good to go. And when you're done, don't forget to torque your wheels to the specified, you know, calibrations so oh gotta pull my e-brake boop yep mm-hmm boop yep yep that seems yep beep oh that one sounded funny hang on boop there we go all right let's try this one boop there you go Calibrated torque wrench, make sure you use it.